everyone, welcome back to another episode of Ocean State Aquatics TV and today we are going to be covering a very important topic and that is acclimation. So as someone that works in the hobby, naturally I have a lot of fish tanks at home, but recently I have actually moved into a new apartment and to make room for my Christmas tree with the holidays coming up, I actually unfortunately have to break down one of my fish tanks. So I brought in a bag of fish from that tank here. So I'm gonna show you how I will be acclimating my own personal fish from the water parameters at my house in Central Rhode Island to the water parameters here in our Seekonk, Massachusetts store. So whenever you buy fish and bring them home, or in my case, bring them from home to somewhere else, or whenever you're really moving fish from any tank to another, you always wanna make sure that you are acclimating them, especially if you are bringing them to different towns and completely different water parameters. So I know for a fact that my pH at home is a lot higher naturally out of the tap than the pH here at Seekonk. And I know our nitrates are probably gonna be different. And there's just gonna be a lot of different factors like TDS that are going to be entirely different between the two water parameters. So I always wanna make sure that you acclimate your fish no matter where you're getting them from or no matter what tank you're moving them from and to just to make sure that they have a great time acclimating to the new water parameters in the easiest way as possible. So to start out, I already temperature acclimated them. They've been floating on top of this tank in the water for about a half an hour now while I turned all the lights on and made sure everything was okay in the store. So now I'm ready to actually start acclimating them. So there's two different types of acclimation. So the first one is drip acclimating, which I will actually be showing you second. And the main type that I'm gonna be showing you today is is actually acclimating in the bag. If you have really, really sensitive fish, I do recommend actually drip acclimating, but if you have fish that are a little bit more hardy, like I have Danios and Egyptian mouth brooders in here, these guys are a little bit more hardy so they can stand being acclimated inside of the bag. So if you're acclimating in the bag, you do always wanna make sure your temperature acclimate first, and then you are slowly going to be adding water from your tank into your bag over a period of time. So the water parameters change slowly from the water that they are currently in to the water that they are going in. So it is not a sudden jump and change in parameters really quickly. So ideally you would use something to hold water that is a lot smaller than this. Uh, but my only smaller cup I have right now, I'm actually buying frozen food in, so I'm gonna make this do. So you're gonna take a little bit of water from your tank, not a lot, just a little, and you're going to physically add it to your bag. So after you do that, you're just gonna let the bag stay inside of the tank. If you've got a bag like us and you have a really, really tall bag, if you just fold it over the top, it's not gonna go anywhere. It's gonna stay right where it is. And you are going to add a cup full of water into the bag about every five to 10 minutes until the water volume in the bag has at least doubled. So my water was about here when I started and I'm gonna keep going until it reaches about here or to make it easy, you can just keep going until the bag is completely full. So five minutes has passed, so I'm ready to put another scoop full of water from the tank and into the bag. All right, I'll be back in another five minutes. So off camera, I've added a few more cupfuls of water into my bag and let the fish acclimate for the full amount of time. So now it is all set to add the fish to the tank. So this is a little bit different because I actually know where these fish came from. They came from my tank, so I know at home I don't have any diseases in my tank, but I'm still gonna show you guys how you should be adding fish into your tank to prevent any cross-contamination of anything from any tanks. So you're gonna take the bag and you're going to pour as much water as possible out of the bag and then net the fish into the tank. So here I have my big brood of water for you guys. You could use like a five gallon bucket or just do it over the sink. And I take the fish bag and I turn it entirely upside down and let the water slowly drain out. And the fish are all staying in the bag at this point. And then right when it gets to the end, I just let them go and then net the fish right into the tank. Now this is a really bittersweet day for me because all the fish that were in this bag, I actually raised entirely from eggs that I got from the store. So watching them all grow up and outgrowing my space at home and bringing them back is really bittersweet, but it's all part of the hobby. Now I got more room to raise more fry that I find at the store and bring back and raise up. So hopefully one of you can come and get them. So I guess that's really it for uh, how we recommend acclimating hardier fish into your fish tank when you buy them either from a store or move them from tank to tank or basically moving any fish from any other tank to a new one. The other way that you can acclimate a fish is called drip acclimating, and I will show you how to do that next. So the next way to acclimate fish into your tank is using the drip acclimation method. So for this method, you are going to need a bucket 
and a piece of airline tubing and optional is a flow control valve. So I don't actually have any fish to acclimate into this tank. So this is just gonna be an empty bucket, but I will still go through all the motions to show you how you should be acclimating. Um, so you're gonna start out with your fish in the bucket in the water that you got them from. So either the water that you got at the store or the water from the tank that they were in, you're gonna put all of that water in the bucket with the fish in it. Next, you're going to start slowly siphoning the water out of the main tank and into the bucket. So the water slowly changes parameters over a period of time. So the fish will slowly get used to the new water parameters. This is a little bit better than the uh, cup method by keeping the fish in the bag because it is a constant change in parameters. Whereas with the cup, you are adding a large quantity of water at one time in the bag and then they slowly get accustomed to that new water parameter and then you change it again and again and again. So it's a little bit more jagged where doing it this way is a little bit more smooth where it's one constant gentle change in parameters. So this method is a lot better for fish that are a lot more sensitive to changing water parameters. So when you get started, you wanna make sure that if you have a tank that is running on a sump or a canister, that your intake has enough water in it to be able to do the whole drip acclimation process. If it doesn't, then just shut your filter off and then top your tank off when you're done. Um, I just topped my tank off so I have enough water in my sump chamber to be able to do the whole drip acclimation process and not worry about my sump running dry. So you're gonna start out by putting the empty end of your drip hose in your tank and then finding some way to secure it so it doesn't fall out. In this case, I'm using catch cup just because it's what I have on hand. At home, I use a clamp. I even use on my smaller tanks, I use an old binder clip I had from school. Uh, basically any way that will hold the hose to your tank that won't clamp it shut. So next thing you are going to do is start the flow from your tank into your bucket. So you are going to have to start a siphon. And since this is unlike a siphon tube that has a thick plastic tube, you do actually have to use your mouth to create a siphon to start the drip process. Since these tubes can sometimes get water stored in them, I always recommend blowing out first before sucking in so you don't get a mouthful of fish tank water. If you have a flow control nozzle on here, you can directly control how fast and how slow the water is dripping out. So you can crank it all the way down and have only a few drops a second. You can have it all the way open where it's a full constant stream. You want it somewhere in the middle so you don't want it going really really slow but you don't want it going really really fast but you want to have a gentle enough stream that the fish are going to acclimate over time to it and then you just leave that in there and then you just let it acclimate until like before the water volume has at least doubled if not a little bit more than that and then after that is completely done this actually temperature acclimates and drip acclimates at the same time i still would recommend floating the bags in the tank before you start this process um, but after the acclimation is all the way done, uh, then you just take your net, scoop your fish out of the bucket and put them in the tank and you are all set to go. Obviously at the end of this process, you want to discard any acclimation water because it may have high ammonia levels, it may have high waste levels, and it may have different diseases or infections from the tank that they came from that you don't want to cross contaminate into your tank. So any water that you use for acclimation, you want to be very sure that you do not add that water into your fish tank at home. Like always, thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions about different acclimation tips, do not hesitate to give us a call or leave it in the comments down below. Thank you guys so much for watching and like always, keep it fresh.